Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mr. G and this is Elect Elite Weather Forecasting. I am your meteorologist, a student at Mississippi State University, majoring in meteorology and geology. And we're going to be talking about the weather forecast. Mr. G, guys, I have been so sick over the last week. I thought I had pneumonia. I thought I was going to end up in the hospital. I, I was so sick. It was a horrible week. I'm still sick, but I feel bad because I haven't been getting you guys a video. I was sick during the time when the tropical storm was really affecting California, so I wasn't able to cover it because I was in the bed sick. And it's been an active week, a very exciting week as far as the weather is concerned. We still got a lot to talk about. I'm going to try not to cough a lot through the video, so I am going to try to take it slow and ease my voice so we're not screaming and yelling and hacking through the video. So let's get started, guys. Uh, behind me is Dallas, Texas. This is our city of the day, the Big D. And man, is this hot. It's 105 degrees in Dallas right now. The heat index has it feeling 116, so it's still really, really hot across the Midwest, down from the Gulf Coast, all the way up to the Northern Plains and Minnesota. Okay, I want to talk about Minnesota, too. It was so hot in Minnesota this week that we were 101 degrees a day or two ago. The dew point made it feel 116. We had 80 per, we had 80 degree dew points with 100 degree air temperatures. Wow, I that it was miserable. It, and to be sick in that, I was glad I was at home. I'm glad my AC worked. My we finally got the AC fixed in the car, so I am very happy. My wife is happy because she's. Went back to college, or not college, but back to her high school is uh, getting ready to start back up in September. And, you know, the teachers have to come in earlier, a few weeks early to get ready. So we just got our air conditioning fixed in our Jeep. So now she's very happy. She doesn't have to drive again this summer without AC. So, yes. So anyway, that hot, look, what is this, this gleaming right there? Must be something reflecting off of the, the hot ass sun out there in Texas today. So let's get ready and jump into the rest of the forecast. All right, so as we move into the rest of the forecast across America, uh, it's hot. It, that, that is the story of the day. That's your weather forecast. Thank you for watching me today. I will see you guys all in the next video. But anyway, it's so hot out there. I'm so sorry about this heat. I wish we could actually control the weather because we would make it 70 degrees for everybody. This heat is atrocious. Unbelievable. That El Nino is just, and the climate change is definitely contributing to these bizarre weather conditions. I mean, we have the heat. We have uh, some uh, some storms. We have a lot of action in the in the tropics right now. The Atlantic is heating up. Um, we still have a lot of activity in the Pacific. So suddenly things are starting to look a lot more active down across the Caribbean and out over the Central Atlantic. So we're going to be covering some of that, and we're going to be dealing with the heat and show you who's going to be expecting thunderstorms through the weekend as well. So let's start our forecast. I'm going to step over here so that we can look at this map here. And what this is, is a forecast for uh, tomorrow, for Friday. And we are dealing with some hot ass weather. I mean, that heat dome, that area of high pressure right here, centered over the center of the nation, right here off of Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, that ridge of high pressure sits right about there. And that high is kind of like uh, putting a lid on the atmosphere and then compress it. You take all the air and you're squeezing that air. And when you compress that air, it builds up friction and heat. So this is why we have this heat 
and we have humidity off of the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico and off of the Atlantic as well and even off of the Pacific. Some moisture is being fed and circulated around underneath this dome of high pressure and, and it is very hot, very humid, triple digit temperatures down through Texas, through Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, the states of Alabama, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. We've been looking at ridiculous temperatures in the 90s as well as humidities in the 70s that's been making for heat indexes over 110 degrees so that will continue tomorrow or Friday but there is a a, a, a bit of good news for some of you folks in the on the northern end of this dome I unfortunately I can't say that for the people in the south if you're in Texas Louisiana Arkansas Oklahoma Tennessee to the Gulf of Mexico you're not going to get a break from the heat really not yet maybe later but you won't get it in the next week or two it's going to continue to be hot but if you're in the ohio valley the great lakes the northeast the upper midwest the northern plains you're going to get a nice break it's going to get pretty nice and start to feel a little bit like fall for some of you guys so let's take a look at what tomorrow what saturday is going to look at now see if you look at the north here we lose a little bit of this gray, gets more of the dark red and the orange. That's cooler temperatures. These are temperatures in the 90s and 80s. These are temperatures in the 70s. We got some 60s starting to move in as well out over the Rockies. So we are starting to see that ridge break down a little bit and flatten out a bit. That's going to allow for a cold front to drop across the uh, Great Lakes and the, the northern part of the country. We are going to see that ridge retrograde to the west. That ridge of high pressure is going to retrograde, rotate back toward the southwestern U.S., which will allow a trough to develop in the northeast and the Great Lakes and drop into the mid-Atlantic, which will allow for cooling temperatures and a decrease in the dew points in the humidity as well. Here is what Sunday looks like. We see that cooling a little bit more across the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest. So Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. Uh, we'll start to see those temperatures in the 70s. Going to start to feel like fall, which is great because it's just in time for the Minnesota State Fair, which begins next Thursday. And... I'm going to Illinois the following weekend, so we won't be able to go to the fair. But I'm, um, you know, hey, we've got family events to look at, to do, you know, for uh, my mother-in-law's 80th birthday, my other sister-in-law's 50th birthday, my wife and I. We had our 15th wedding anniversary this year, so we are going to celebrate these milestone uh, birthdays and anniversaries and and things like that so we're going to be getting together with the family having some fun near the farm or whatever so uh but anyway yeah look at that very nice but look at this continues going to stay hot in texas louisiana mississippi alabama of tennessee oklahoma unfortunately it's going to continue to suck for you guys but now let's talk about what this is is we look at the entire this loop here is uh we have where well, we're going to be seeing that temperatures drop you see our cold front dropping down and you see things getting a bit cooler out there and here we are to talk about those dew points these are those dew points in the 70s and 80s but as you're going to watch take a look at this as this cooler air up in canada drops down now this is lower dew points which also help to cool the air because those temperatures will feel a lot better when those cooler dew points start to sweep on through the northeast and the Great Lakes. And you see that blue, that's drier air. And as you can see that blue is dropping down slowly across the, I guess I could have made this run a little bit faster. When I, 
<laughs> when I, oh, excuse me, sorry. When I created this map, I could have made that run a little faster. So anyway, uh, but anyway, that is the cooling that we're going to be seeing across the northern half. And we have some rain to talk about. We're still seeing those monsoon thunderstorms. Look where we can see some heavier rain across eastern Colorado and parts of Kansas and Nebraska as we head towards Sunday. We could pick up about four inches of rain so we could see some flooding issues across parts of the central high plains of the United States. So we will be seeing those monsoon thunderstorms through the weekend where we could be picking up about anywhere from a general quarter to a half an inch. Some locations could pick up an inch or more, but we do see some places across the high plains right about there over eastern Colorado and western Kansas and western Nebraska that could pick up as much as four inches of rain and this is where we're going to be seeing across the Great Lakes again this is our advancing frontal boundary and an area of low pressure that's going to be producing uh, some showers and thunderstorms and we're going to be seeing some heavier rain here across parts of the Ohio Valley where we could pick up as much as three or four inches of rain through parts of Ohio and Indiana and northern Kentucky we're going to be seeing some heavier rain by the time we move into Saturday and Sunday again we're going to be seeing hey I'm missing a map I'm missing the map. Am I missing the map? Yeah, I guess I am missing the map. I, I had another one for the northern plains. But anyway, that's not important. They only get isolated showers and thunderstorms across North and South Dakota today as well. But here's our severe weather outlook. And this is what we're seeing this afternoon into Friday. We have our slight risk and a moderate risk for severe weather across the Ohio Valley. So uh, southeastern Michigan parts of northwestern, uh, northeastern Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania, southwestern New York State, we're going to be seeing an enhanced risk for some severe weather, and that's going to be for damaging winds and large hail, isolated tornadoes and heavy rainfall that could lead to some flash flooding. But then apart through parts of the southern Ohio Valley and into Appalachia, that includes West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, we're going to be seeing a, a marginal risk for some severe thunderstorms as we head into your Saturday. And then as we take a look at what's going to be going on across the high plains this afternoon, we have a slight risk for severe weather way up there along the Canadian border, northwestern Minnesota, northeastern North Dakota, but we do have a marginal risk that will drop down all the way into Nebraska, central Nebraska, central, west central, uh, South Dakota, and southwestern North Dakota. We have a marginal risk for severe thunderstorms. And we're going to be looking for those uh, tornadoes out there across the high plains are going to be the primary threat. Isolated tornadoes, some large hail is also going to be possible, and damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour will also be something to be uh, take note of across the uh, high plains in the north as well. And here we go. This is for tomorrow. We have a severe weather outlook for the mid-Atlantic. So uh, Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey, and parts of southern Pennsylvania. We have the risk for marginally severe thunderstorms, a marginal shot uh, severe weather. And we're going to be looking at threats that will include some damaging winds and some heavy rain with some hail possible. And that's what we're going to be looking at across the mid-Atlantic. And we're going to be seeing that across the Ohio Valley. Now, why is this shaped like this? Why does this look like this snake across from the mid-Atlantic down through the central plains? That is where we have a cold front that is dropping down. This is that leading edge of that cooler, drier air coming down from Canada, but it's clashing with the hot, humid air to the south. So we're going to be seeing showers and thunderstorms breaking out along that frontal boundary that's going to be leading to that uh, severe weather uh, outlook for tomorrow on your Saturday from the mid-Atlantic all the way across to the central plains. So that includes 
parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, seven Iowa, seven Illinois, seven Indiana, uh, Kentucky, we got West Virginia, we have Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware, and New Jersey, and North Carolina. So a lot of people in the bullseye for some severe weather tomorrow. Here is our regional radar. This is where we're looking at monsoon thunderstorms developing down there across the southwest. Uh, we got some storms develop here, here across the Muggy High Rim, Sholo, Arizona, and Pine Top. There's Flagstaff right there. And just to the north, we're seeing some thunderstorms developing and up into Utah, uh, Bryce Canyon. We have Zion National Park. We're seeing some severe thunderstorms as well as uh, east here near the Colorado border. And we have uh, some severe storms through parts of the high plains up there, through North and South Dakota and Vermont, and not Vermont, but um, Nebraska. We're seeing those severe thunderstorms. And we're gonna be looking for elevated thunderstorms here with some those long rope tornadoes. It's gonna be uh, an area that you can see very far because everything is high up in the sky. So any tornadoes that develop won't be those short wedge tornadoes that can often be rain wrapped. These will be low precipitation producing supercells with that will produce these long rope tornadoes or stovepipe tornadoes that will be visible from a long way away. So it will make for excellent opportunities for research and video photography for the storm chasers out there. This is probably going to be the more exciting place to chase storms over the next couple of days regardless of the activity to the east because that activity tends to be more surface based than elevated in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere what we see across the plains as a storm chaser it would be it's better to chase across the plains than it is across the east many things are hard to uh to see across the east because you have denser forests and the clouds are lower to the ground it's often harder to spot tornadoes over the east, uh, the east and in the south the south is also difficult to storm chase or to get good visuals or tornadoes as you often get uh, rain wrapped activity which is harder to track visually you have to rely more on data representation and, and, and uh, your radar and things like that so uh, here is more to look at here is those thunderstorms that we're seeing across the high plains this afternoon we're seeing those showers and storms over here in North and South Dakota and we're going to be looking at those possibility of those elevated thunderstorms today and those tornadoes that tornado potential as well here is our weather across the uh, the Northeast here's the Ohio Valley we're seeing showers and thunderstorms today and this is where we can see heavier rainfall that would can lead to a slight chance for some flooding concerns across the southern Ohio Valley into parts of northern Kentucky near Louisville right there in Evansville Indiana and parts of Ohio we're going to be seeing uh, heavier rain showers today from some of those thunderstorms here we are let's talk about the tropics the tropics with tropics before we get done now the tropics is starting to pick up across the Atlantic now we have tropical storm Franklin to talk about which is kind of weak out there with um, winds of about in the 50 mile an hour range but it's kind of meandering around a little bit it's going to make a turn toward the north and eventually head toward the uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland but it's going to remain out at sea believe I believe but as it gets further to the north it's going to skirt by the coastline of Newfoundland but it's going to uh, we see it as a hurricane this is the first is it the first hurricane of the Atlantic yeah the first hurricane is Franklin here and it's going to remain a hurricane as it makes its way north on Tuesday just off the coast of North Carolina it will not affect the United States directly it could increase the swells across the Atlantic uh, it, it, except uh, it's going to affect shipping interest and it's going to uh, bother the cruise line routes and things and it's going to pass just to the west of Bermuda now Bermuda is going to be threatened by two different storms this week 
and we'll talk about the second storm. Here is our second storm, and this one is Emily, Tropical Storm Emily, down here over the Caicos, Turks and Caicos, way out here over the Atlantic, and it's going to be making its way to the west, northwest, and eventually it's a slow mover. It's not really under any heavy st steering currents right now. So by Thursday morning, we're going to see, and this is about a week from now, we're going to be seeing uh, this tropical storm making its way towards the north. And again, it's going to skirt past Newfoundland right there, but it's going to remain mostly out at sea and only affect uh, shipping interests. I don't think this is going to intensify much stronger than a, maybe beyond Thursday. It may become a weak tropical storm for a day or so, but I don't think it will become a hurricane. And now we have uh, Gert out here. Now, Gert is a, a conundrum. Gert is confused. Gert don't know what the hell he wants to do, but we have this very weak tropical storm out here that is... Uh, just just kind of going around in circles. It's just kind of stuck. So I don't expect much development from this or much activity just west of the uh, Turks the Turks and Caicos west of uh, uh, Jamaica not Jamaica Jamaica is over here, but Puerto Rico is right there So it's just to the east of Puerto Rico, and it's just a tropical storm with um, 45 mile per hour wind so uh, again, a lot more activity across the Gulf of, of the, the Atlantic and down in the Gulf of Mexico. We just had Harold uh, move into the uh, hip Texas, South Texas with rainbow. I was sick, so I wasn't able to cover it. But south of San Antonio, down to the Mexican border, we saw a lot of heavy rain from Tropical Storm Harold uh, just a day or two ago. That's long gone, and now that moisture is caught up in the monsoon flow. So it's, it's enhancing monsoon storms and eventually will enhance the weather and influence the weather across the northern United States, the northern Rockies, and the high plains. Is go the remnants is going to enhance any showers and thunderstorms and moisture in the atmosphere. So that is your weather forecast for today. My name is Mr. G. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow if my recovery continues to improve. Um, this has been miserable. <laughs> I've never been so sick. This ain't even COVID. I didn't even. I had COVID a month ago, and I wasn't this sick with COVID. So, whatever this is, it's for the birds. They can kiss my ass. So I'm, I'm done. So, but anyway, I'm gonna edit this video and get this posted for TikTok and YouTube. Leave your likes, comments, and concerns. Say, Mr. G, you suck. You don't know what the f you talking about, or you just the greatest weather man ever. I don't know. Say what you got to say. I feel you got nothing but love for you. And I will see y'all tomorrow, hopefully, in our next video. Bye-bye.